Hello everyone. Welcome to Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary. I'm Lori and today I'm going to talk with you a little bit about temperament and choosing the right family snake for you. Here's a little bit of background information that I think is important for you to be aware of and then it will help you understand where I'm coming from when I start talking about things to look for in a snake's temperament before you bring one home or things to have the breeder check for you. First of all, temperament research in reptiles has mostly been with snakes and lizards, and there isn't that much of it out there, but there are several papers that have been published in the scientific literature about the subject. Studies on anti-predator behavior in snakes have produced evidence of individual consistency of behavior over time, consistency of behavior across different situations, a heritable basis for individual behavioral differences, and some individual variation with fitness-related outcomes when it comes to behavior tendencies. Findings mirror those in other vertebrates, and they focus mainly on five traits, shyness, boldness, exploration, avoidance, activity, sociability, and conspecific aggression. Here's an example. A recent paper published by Brashears, Focadus, and Donardo in 2019 in the General and Comparative Endocrinology Journal found that responses were general for a species with some variability among individuals within a certain species. This is a study that I really found fascinating. They looked at three different species of pythons and they tested their response to a threat or perceived danger and they call that an anti-predator response. They found that the Bismarck ringed pythons default anti-predator response or distress behavior when threatened was to coil and strike. That the children's pythons default behavior was to flee, except for one individual out of all of those in the study group that consistently exhibited striking behavior. And then in royal pythons, they found that the default behavior was to ball up and hide their head within their coils. This is an example of how temperaments are pretty specific and general to an entire species, but that there can be individual differences within the species for certain individuals, and that not all snake species exhibit the same temperaments. So temperament does vary between species. Well, what is temperament? At this point in our little mini course, you might be asking that. It's a stable biological tendency that's innate to individuals. It means that we are all born with a certain temperament. We may be specifically on the reactive side or the proactive side or the shy side or the bold side, and all vertebrates share certain innate temperaments. These are characteristics that appear early, they're heritable, and they're a result of our neural functioning. Organisms are born with temperament tendencies that they will keep throughout life. Now, temperament is part of personality. However, as individuals grow, they develop specific personalities. Part of that personality is the innate temperament they were born with, but there is also a learned component to personality. So if I was born particularly shy, I can learn to be less shy, but I'm always gonna have that tendency to be on the shy end of the temperament spectrum, even though I can learn to modify that a little bit. Or if I'm born particularly bold to the point where I'm obnoxious and irritating, I can learn to tamp that down. I can learn to be less bold, less direct, less irritating, but I'm always going to lean towards that end of the temperament spectrum, even though I can learn to modify that behavior somewhat. These are some things that I've used when I'm picking out snakes for myself. And my picking out snakes is usually based on a particular study or a particular training trial that I want to do with them. And so I specifically might be looking for a certain temperament or personality type for the specific study. But I want you to look at this as you're picking out a snake family member. You want the snake to fit into your lifestyle and fit in well with your family. So what type of temperament do you think that's going to fit in? These are things that you can look for if you're fortunate enough to see the snake babies in person and pick one out for yourself. 
or that the breeder could look at for you if they're willing to do this or that you know you could do together maybe over a video or something so the first thing that you do is really simple you just open the tub or bin or open the enclosure whatever they're living in and you stand back and don't do anything but watch what does the snake do does it freeze does it hide does it exhibit escape and avoidance behavior? Does it coil, hiss, and strike? Does it move forward? Does it start to climb out? Does it tongue flick? Or does it do something else? And you wanna write that down. You wanna make notes about all of the behaviors that you see from that individual snake. The next thing that you wanna do, or that you would have the breeder do, is open the tub or bin or the enclosure doors, and then you wanna stand very nearby, within touching distance, so that you could easily touch the snake, although you're not going to, and that the snake could easily touch you, and they might. You're just gonna stand there near them, and you're gonna see what they do next, with your presence physically right there, near their space. Do they freeze? Do they hide? Do they escape, avoid, or, or flee? Do they coil, hiss, and strike at you? Do they move towards you? Do they tongue flick or smell you? Do they climb onto you or do they do something else? Again, you wanna take notes and you wanna write that down or have the breeder do that or have the breeder videotape these things for you. The third thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna place a novel object at one end of the tub or bin or the enclosure. A novel object is something new to the snake. It's something the snake's never seen before. And it can literally be anything as long as a snake hasn't been exposed to it previously and as long as it is safe for the animal to be around. And it could be a ball, a rock, a stick, a paper towel roll. It could be a piece of clothing. It could be a Rubik's cube for those of you who are old enough to know what that is. It could be a stuffed animal. It could literally be anything, an empty box that you just stick in there. And the reason I say that you stick it at one end is you don't want that novel object to interfere with the snake getting to any resources. You don't want it to block the snake from getting to its hide or its water dish or being able to thermoregulate. And that's if the snake is afraid of it and trying to avoid that object, you don't want it to interfere with things the snake's gonna need to get to. So you want it kind of out of the way and then the snake can choose to interact with it or not. So what does the snake do in relation to that novel object? Let's say it's a coffee mug. Well, does it freeze, hide, avoid it? Does it coil, hiss, or strike at it? Does it move towards it? Does it tongue flick or smell it? Maybe it climbs in it, climbs on it, climbs through it, or does something else. You want to write all that down, make notes about the snake's behavior and what it did. Well, what do these things that you took notes about and observed and wrote down tell you about the temperament of your snake? Well, again, research into this is very preliminary. And even temperament tests that are done with shelter dogs or dogs from breeders that try to match the puppies or the adult dogs up with appropriate homes are under scrutiny and are always being reevaluated. So this in snakes and other reptiles is really new. This is just some options for you to consider when picking out your snake. But what these things may be able to tell you or give you an idea about is where the snake falls on the temperament spectrum. And the temperament spectrum, unlike some other things, is a reverse bell curve. So many times when we talk about spectrums, there are extremes at one end of the spectrum or the other, and the majority of people or animals are in the middle. And with temperament, it's actually the reverse. With temperament, organisms are grouped at one end or the other of that temperament spectrum. So for example, a tendency to freeze hide or use a fight or flight response to a perceived threat. And there's gonna be very few individuals in the middle, although there will be some that you'll find in the middle. Most all organisms are going to be grouped towards one end of the other. They're either going to be extremely shy or extremely bold. That's innately when they're born. And again, through some learning, and organisms can learn to be less bold or less shy, but they're always going to tend towards one end of the spectrum or the other. So those snakes that are going to tend to freeze and hide are gonna have responses on the shy end of the spectrum and they're gonna be more reactive. 
Now, more reactive doesn't necessarily mean more active physically. More reactive means that they're gonna be more sensitive to environmental stimuli and more things in the environment are gonna cause them to have some kind of a reaction. So individuals on this end of the spectrum, the shy reactive end, are gonna typically have a default response that includes freezing or hiding. They're gonna be more passive and cautious and also more flexible. And that might sound strange, but if you think about it, if an individual is more reactive to everything in their environment and more worried and sensitive about everything, they're gonna be more flexible in their behaviors because they're constantly gonna be reacting to stuff. Now, those snakes on the bold end of the temperament spectrum are gonna be the ones that typically are gonna to default to that fight or flight response. They're gonna be more proactive about the way they respond to environmental stimuli. They may be more aggressive, more assertive, more risk-taking, and more curious about things. So they may be the ones that climb out of the bin or come towards you when you're standing there or investigate that novel object versus the animals on the shy reactive end. And then they're gonna be more rigid and that just means they're gonna be more routine based. And that's because they're more confident in their abilities and they aren't going to be as sensitive to things that happen to them or that are environmentally stimulating. And so they're just gonna to stick to a more routine based way of life. Here are some examples within my own population of snakes. Now, fulcrum is shy and reactive. And that is very typical of his species, which is Python regis. And then Ronin is very bold and proactive. That's also very typical of his species, Brettles pythons. Now, Fulcrum is one of five Python regis we have here. And Ronin is one of 34 Brettles pythons we have here. And I can tell you that not only based on literature that's outside of our facility, but research we've done here, that it is very common for Python regis to be on the shy reactive end of the temperament spectrum and for Brettles pythons to be on that bold, proactive end of the temperament spectrum. But I wanna jump over here to the other side of the slide just to give you an idea that you will have individuals within a certain species that are outliers that don't fall into the norm of what the rest of their species in general tends to behave like. Sarek is an example of that. He is a very bold and proactive Python Regis. He almost never hides. He engages during the daytime as well as at night. He seeks to come out of his enclosure. He investigates novel objects and novelty in general. He's just a very bold, proactive individual, which isn't typical of his species. So he's an outlier. And then Geharis is a more shy and reactive Brettles python. So he's an outlier within his species because most Brettles pythons aren't shy and reactive. It's taken him about three years to come out of his shell and be a little bit more engaging with his environment. So wild temperament in general is going to group organisms at one end of the spectrum or the other, you can have some outliers. And that's just important to understand. And it's important because it illustrates why you need to look at individuals when you're picking out your snake and not just solely choose based on what kind of snake they are. Because if you choose a Brettles python thinking they're gonna be proactive and bold and visible and, and really outgoing and you're gonna see them all the time, what happens if you randomly pick one out or get sent one by a breeder and it happens to be that outlier that is shy and reactive. So this is why I think it's important that you see them yourself or have the breeder assess them or take a video for you to take a look at. You need to ask yourself what your expectations of the snake are. What temperament traits are gonna fit in well with you and your family? What temperament type will likely adapt best to fit your lifestyle, to fit your personality? What temperament type is likely to match your expectations of the snake? That's really important that you know what your expectations of the animal are, what you're gonna be happy with and what you're not gonna be happy with. Do your best to choose a snake species to start with that's gonna meet your expectations. And then from there, do your best to pick out an individual within that species whose temperament is gonna be a good fit for you. 
and your household and the environment you expect that snake to function in. Here is a list of references, and there are many, many more out there, but these are some important ones that I think if you wanted to do some further reading on your own, I would start with. I want to thank you for your time and interest in animal behavior and training. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at behavioreducationllc at gmail.com through my website at behavioreducation.org or message me on social media. You can find me on YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Thank you very much. And until next time, everybody, please remember to always be kind and love your animals.